Just because I poke fun at the stories I read and or fan art featured in my videos doesn't mean that anyone should harass the creators of anything featured in this show. Cyberbullying is a serious issue that damages people emotionally and psychologically, sometimes to the point of self-harm and or suicide. Please keep any and all criticism constructive and reasonable for all parties involved. Thank you. Hey guys, what's up? It's Gothcat bringing you episode 5 of the Crappy Pasta Show. Today's story is called Aiden the Transformation, a sl slightly broken uh, Slenderman fanfic with uh, a few uh, spelling and grammatical errors scattered throughout. You'll see what I mean when I read this story. And without further ado, let's begin. friends told me about this. I never believed it until that day. I am a female year one from a high school I thought I was normal, but after that day I never thought of myself that way again. When we were year ones in the high school, we were more mature or so I thought I was friends with two girls and four boys. I did have other friends though. We would come up with stupid stories to scare the younger ones, but there was one person in the class who never really did talk much, his name being Josh. He was qu a quiet, nice, shy, and sweet boy who never got into trouble. After the summer holidays, it was the time I dreaded high school. I didn't really know what to do or where to start. But Josh, who never really talked to me, came up to me and asked me a question. Hey, um, d do you have a minute? He asked in a shy, calm voice. Yes, what is it? I replied. I always found it awkward when talking to him. Um, well, this, er, uh, what I'm trying to say is I have been thinking lately about what you guys call creepy pastas, and I want to know more about the Slender Man. I thought for a while he wasn't the type of person to read or look up to stuff like this, but I couldn't refuse. Sure, I'll tell you about the Slender Man or what I know of it. After a while, I got used to talking to him and had explained what I know about the Slender Man. He looked worried when I finished. I asked him if he was okay, but he walked away and ignored my question. So I waited till break to talk to him again. When it was break, there was no sight of him for the fifth time. I actually got worried about him until I found him behind a boulder. I asked again if he was okay, and this time he was willing to explain to me what was wrong. He sat me down to tell me the story, and this is where it got where it got weird. Well, you see, it started last night. I was reading the Slenderman creepypasta, and I had heard my door creep open. I was afraid to shut it, so I left it. After a while, I went to bed, not finishing what I was reading, and almost immediately fell to asleep. As I woke up early in the morning to get ready, I noticed my laptop was on. There was a downloaded picture file that was called Can't See. I got freaked out, and I knew it had to be something to do with Slenderman, and that's it, Josh explained. I didn't reply or ever move, as I saw a strange boy-like creature with a blindfold standing right behind Josh. I rubbed my eyes, and to my surprise, it was still there. I grabbed Josh's ha hand and ran as I thought my life depended on it. Why'd you do that? Josh shouted. I scanned my surroundings and saw nothing ignoring Josh's question. question. I sighed in relief and realized jo 
Joshua was still waiting for an ans for an answer. Oh, I er thought I saw Slenderman. As bad as an excuse as it was, I still went on with it. Really? I perked my head up as he said what he said. I thought that he would know it was a lie, but he still fell for it. Er, yes, he said. I said nervously, trying to keep a straight face. He stared at me and walked away like everything was just hunky-dory. I sighed once again in relief and walked to class, which I was late for. Walking down the empty, lonely corridor, something caught the corner of my eye and something like young a boy. I quickly turned around and focused my eyes to nothing. Ack, I'm late for class. I shouldn't be mucking about, I said my to myself, trying to keep my voice down. After getting in trouble for being late for all my classes because of Josh, who said also was getting in trouble for the same thing, I walked home to do some re research, but to find absolutely nothing but a single bit of information. I stayed up until till 4 a.m., and then I couldn't take it. I had to get to sleep as my door crept it open. I couldn't ignore it as Josh told me his door had done the same, but I did have a cat, so I called out her name. Sophie, is that you? Sophie? I heard nothing, and there was no movement at all, so I decided to go to sleep. 5.27 a.m., my cat wakes me up by scratching at my foot. Ow, stop it. Huh? What the... After looking at my side, I screamed as loud as I could. The covers were covered in blood. The pillow was covered in blood. I was covered in blood. After panting and screaming for what seemed like forever, I realized something wasn't right. My mom, my dad, they were light sleepers. I knew that would wake them up, and the neighbors would have heard it too. I attempted to get up, but no one but no use I couldn't. It was impossible. I tried screaming for help, but I got no response. I cursed and eventually got up, making the situation worse. As I stood up, I heard a crack and fell down onto the floor. I was so tired, but I knew I couldn't fall asleep in the situation, but the pain made it harder for me not to go to sleep. After fighting the pain for an hour, I gave in a fell face first to the floor, like I took a truck to the face and fell asleep. 7 a.m., I wake up in bed. Wait, huh, but what? I said aloud, thinking no one was about. Honey, do you mind? And keep it down, your father needs his sleep. My mom came in looking like she had just come of a roller coaster straighter after a meal. Mom? Mom! I ran over to give her a hug, although I knew she would be very confused. Uh-huh. Anyway, please keep it down, my mom said, starting, staring at the wall. My mom acted like this was normal. I was so confused, I face-planted my pillow and fell back asleep. I woke up an hour later and knew I was going to be late if I didn't get ready fast, but then I remembered the nightmare I had. I sat and thought I wasn't going to go to school today because of this, so I made up an excuse. I checked the time hours after to find out that school had finished, not that it mattered to me, but I got a surprise when I heard the door knock. I stood up and went to answer it and got an even, even bigger surprise. It was er, Josh. Hey, and do you have a minute? Josh, Josh asked in a strange tone. Yes, I do. Come in. I wanted to say no, but I was too curious, so I let him in, I, but I had to be sneaky. My mom was still there. She didn't like when I invited people in, but as we walked past her, she said, Oh, hi, honey. Hi, Josh. How did she know Josh? Maybe I told her about him and forgot. Anyway, back to the story. He stared at me for about half an hour for, or so it seemed, just looking at his dark brown eyes. They were almost completely covered up by his pupils. I could tell he was in fear. Well, I opened the pic that picture file and er, 
the the picture was uh, but very disturbing. Come t to my house and see if you can. He told me in his fearful tone of what he had been up to, but a large but a urge of curiosity hit me when I saw he had a bit of paper in, in his pocket. I could see his words. There could have been more though. And the two words were can't see. Her Josh, can I see that bit of paper for a sec? He nodded hesitantly and handed me the paper. I read it. It had some sort of poem, I guess, on it, but I wasn't sure. It said, I can't see its pitch black. I'm not safe. I can't watch my back. Are my eyes even still there? Could they have one of, but where? I know I'll steal a pair from the boy in thick black hair. I knew somehow it was talking about Josh. I saw it. He had thick black hair, but I have to be sure of this. Anyway, let's go to your house. I need... I want to see that picture. I didn't know what came over me. I didn't need to see it. I was just curious. We head on over to the house and he sets up his laptop as I wait for him. I be a little noisy and snoop around his stuff. I find his drawer and look inside. As I am looking inside, I notice another bit of paper. It had one simple learn word on it saying Aiden. His name, it just fit the poem. If I would pronounce it Aidon, the aid part of the name fit the poem to me. So, well, it just blew my mind away. Was the thing I've been seeing could have been the one known as Aiden? Hey, I er, set this up. Um, just click this file here. He pointed to the picture file. I slowly used the cursor and went towards it in, and clicked it and gasped. Soon as the horrifying image came up on the screen, it was a little boy with a blindfold, black hair. Like he had just had a haircut, a white shirt with few buttons on it to keep the two sides together, and black bottoms that covered his feet. It's him. I muttered under my voice. Well, I'd better be going. See ya. I knew I shouldn't have left like that, but I had so much to look up and write down about this. 11 p.m. I'm still writing down what has happened since. I went to Josh's house. I still don't know what is going on, so I look up paranormal activity on Google, but it just came up with that damn movie. After searching for hours, it was 4 a.m. and my door opened again. I knew straight away there was a pattern here, so I got out of bed to look outside my bedroom. <laughs> I searched the whole house but found nothing, so I went back to my room and my laptop was shut. I opened it and it said I downloaded a file called Not Long Before You Can't See. I jumped when I opened up the file the same boy, but holding two eyeballs, but he looked different. His black hair was no, no messy and long, like it hadn't been cut or brushed in years. His pure white shirt now was a dirty red, and his blindfold has gone reveling to empty black horrible sockets where the eyes should have been. It looked like he had just pulled out his own eyes. I faint at the horrifying image. 5.27 a.m. I wake up to a bang and look about my room, then look straight ahead of me, and he was there, Aiden. It started to talk to me in a sweet, calm voice. I'm Aiden, and I want to borrow from something you have possible keep forever. He asked in a sweet voice. What, what is that? I stuttered. I shuddered, knowing I should be getting out of my room to get help, but I was somehow paralyzed. Aiden took off the blindfold to a pair of dark brown eyes that looked similar to someone's I know, but... It could be anyone's, even Aiden's. I borrowed these from someone called Josh, but they aren't as nice as yours. He grabbed the eyes with both his hand and threw 
them on the ground. He stood waiting for a reaction, but got none from me. All I did was shake. He didn't look at the eyes, then looked up at me with a sinister grin plastered on his face. He yet again looked down at the eyes on the ground and stamped on one of them, causing a huge squash noise to be sounded. I gagged and looked away, being able to force myself to move. He then started to talk again, but in a demonic voice that made me jolt up to look at him again, and I regret looking at him. My sweet, I love your eyes. Could I take them? Eden said with that huge grin on his face like it was permanent. I tried to open my mouth to speak to him, but it didn't work at all. My mouth felt like it was sewn up. All was silent for about ten minutes. All we did was stare at each other, staring at his empty sockets. It was like staring into oblivion, but also reminded me of about other, another creepy pasta called Isler's Jack. Eventually, he spoke again. No answer, huh? Well, I'll just take them. <laughs> Small chuckles turned into insane laughter. After his laughing spree, all was dead around us apart from us, and I broke the gaze again, finally being able to fully activate my movement. I put my hand to my mouth. I wanted to scream so loud, but it was impossible. My mouth somehow had to be sewed shut with my veins. Now that I had noticed why I couldn't talk, I started to cry. Adrian looked at me and opened his mouth to talk again. He's here, Aiden said in my cherry tones to what that huge grin on his face. I muffled but still couldn't talk. I was confused like any other person would have been, but I knew that this was different. My mom. She had been brainwashed. Now I know she wouldn't have acted like that way. Why didn't I suspect that before? Don't be sad. We have something special planned for you. Tee <laughs> Aiden said as his grin dropped to a small smile and turned around, also moving a bit to the right to re reveal the monster of my dreams, the one I'd feared the most. The Slender Man. My eyes widened in fear, I couldn't help but move back, squashing myself as far back to the wall as I could. The tall figure looked at me with the non-existent eyes, but my gaze was now fixed on the tall man. I blacked out after that. News report. Last night, two kids were reported missing, Celia Gildan and Josh Botcher. We have but only one set expect. The mother of Celia Gildan, Jacqueline Gildan, although there is no evidence she is a suspect because of her behavior. Jacqueline sat down on the couch with a cup of tea, sighing, sighing after turning on the TV. She had gone insane. She thought she was seeing things. She had set her daughter and friend up with demon and know she was going to get caught. Jacqueline turned around to see a girl with purple hair and her mouth sewn up with her pains. Huh? Who are you? Jacqueline shouted at the demonic girl. The girl stared at the woman and walked up to her tears streaming down her cheeks. The purple haired girl cornered Jacqueline and brought out a knife from her back pocket. It hit Jacqueline. This is what she gets. Her daughter had been transformed, and Jacqueline was defenseless against the demon that was once her daughter. Jacqueline embraced herself for the pain as the knife was put between her lips and slid up forward to make a smile on her face. Like Jeff the Killer thought the purple-haired girl, Celia was now totally transformed. She was no one of them. She could now be with them a proxy. Jacqueline, Jacqueline was screaming out in pain. Police sirens roared in the background, and Celia ran for the window up for finish the traitor. Her once mum. Celia, now known as Silent Sobs by the other proxy, had turned into an insane killer and will never be same the same again. 
I can't believe I managed to do that in one recording. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a long one. Uh, that was a bit of a long one. Um, I think the uh, biggest flaw besides the obvious uh, shitty killer theme is it kind of suffers from <laughs> from uh, perpetual run-on run sentences. Uh, in the beginning, there were very few, there were uh, either comments or uh, commas or nothing instead of periods and and uh, basically commas or nothing at all and uh, a few times uh, there were periods in inappropriate places uh, the spelling errors were uh, pretty scattered and uh, yeah. This is like a, uh, <laughs> this is like fourth grade level writing, right? Um, fourth or fifth grade uh, level writing right here. Oh, God. I'd say, I'd say this is written by an elementary school British kid since it has mom instead of mom. Uh... Yeah, and in the end, they describe a purple-haired girl. Um, the protagonist uh, never described herself or even mentioned her name, and the name is like at the very end of the story, and we never uh, we never find out that the protagonist had purple hair right up until the very end. <laughs> I mean, there's there's just so much wrong with the story. Uh, more than uh, more than I remembered um, in the introduction. <laughs> so, uh, if you're into really shitty stories, I highly recommend that. This is Goth Cat signing out. Oh, for some reason, I keep forgetting what pasta. I for keep forgetting to mention what pasta I read uh, in the next episode. So, uh, next time I read, uh, Scratches, yet another shitty killer story. This is Gothcat signing out. Thank you, and goodbye.